Welcome everyone to the installation tutorial of Honor Float water level controller. You can buy this from Amazon and we'll leave the link on the description below. We can open the packet right away. Uh, we can see the one year guarantee card with the contact details and also a wiring diagram and an installation manual with the QR code of the video. Yeah, this is the float switch which has to be fixed on top of the water tank. It has an extension wire in it and also a protective cover for the joint. Now this is the dead weight. Now we have all the small attachments in a packet. This is the float ball. Now the control unit is the last part. Now let's look at the control unit. It has an auto off manual selection switch and a pump on indication and a three-way connector and a two-way connector on the side. Uh, these connectors can be opened and the connections has to be made. And afterwards, we can close this connector like this. On the side also, we have a cap for the safety. Now let's look at the contents of the packet. As we can see, we have two wall plugs and two large screws for the control unit. And there are two small screws for the float unit. And this is a stopper nut which we will look on later. Uh, this is a bush uh, that goes on top of the float ball like this. And now we have a small hook. Uh, this goes on the dead weight like this. Now we will install the float unit on our water tank. First we have to make a 1 cm hole on the tank. This is a float switch of on float water level controller. As we can see, we can see a extending wire coming out of it. We can open this protective cover and take out this, that wire. And we can see an extension, a white extension coming out from the uh, body. It has to go in that hole that we made just now. Now I am inserting the wire inside that hole into the tank. And as you can see, that extension goes in the tank. Now I have to make two holes on both sides to fix the float unit. Now using a screwdriver and the provided screws, I'm fixing it in place. You can also see the conduit and the cable that is coming from the control unit. Let's take out the wire that we already inserted in the tank. We have to pass through the stopper nut, uh, through the string. We have to unscrew this small bolt here and we can pass the string through it. The stopper nut has to be fixed at the maximum level, one or two inch below the overflow limit and make sure not to over tight the stopper nut to avoid breakage of the wire. And now we have to pass the float ball and the bush that we seen earlier. And we have to pass the string through the small hole there like this and in the end we have the dead weight the bottom side of the dead weight marks the minimum level at which the pump starts pumping so we have to cut the extra wire to the minimum limit that you require and tie the dead weight now we can release all these components into the water tank As you can see here, the dead weight at the minimum level and the stopper at the maximum level. And the float moves in between them. Now let's look at the electrical connections. As we can see, uh, two wires are coming out of the float unit. And we are taking a cable uh, from the flo uh, tank here to the control unit downstairs. And now we have to join these two wires with the two wires on our cable. Like so. I have to insulate the joint. I'm using a normal insulation tape for that purpose. As you can see, I have insulated the joint. Now I have to use a waterproof insulation tape in order to make this joint waterproof. These are always used in submersible pumps to make the joints waterproof. I can cut a required length and I have to put it around the joint in order to make it waterproof.
and while I am doing it, I am using a little bit of force there. I am pulling it a little bit in order to make the joint perfect. Two thirty volt AC goes to the float switch, so that you have to make sure the joint is very safe. In that case, you have to use such insulation. I have made both the joints insulated using waterproof insulation tapes and I have to keep it in place and close the box like this. It's a press fit box, you can close it like that. We have completed the insulation of our float unit. We can see that all the electrical connections and electrical contacts are outside the water tank and nothing is in contact with the water. Let's do the installation of our control unit. We have to open the switch box of our motor. Only a person with electrical knowledge must do this because it involves electricity and it can be dangerous. Now let's open the switch box with a screwdriver. As we can see here, the red line is the input phase and the blue is the output phase to the motor. These are the input and output neutrals. We have to make the connections according to the wiring diagram. After turning off the main switch, we have to remove the output wire. The output blue is removed and we have to insert another red wire and tighten it with the screwdriver. The removed wire is connected with the yellow wire and it has to be insulated like this. Also we have to connect a wire to the neutral, output neutral. This neutral does not have to be the neutral of the motor, you can connect it or loop it from any neutral. Now we have connected the black to the neutral, red to the input phase and yellow to the output to the motor. We have to connect the control unit now with these three wires, red, yellow, black as we can see here. Red is the input phase that comes to the control unit, yellow is the output that goes to the motor and black is a neutral. Now we have made all the connections and we can see the float switch also is connected on the two connectors right side. This cable goes to the water tank. We have used a flexible hose in order to keep all the wires inside. And now we have to use a drilling machine uh, to make two holes and fix it on the wall. As you can see, we have fixed the control unit near the motor switch and we have to put the selection switch in auto mode. We'll now look at the working of our float switch. As I said earlier, the bottom of the dead weight marks the minimum water level the water level at which the motor starts. As we can see, the water level has reached the bottom and the motor is turning on. And the motor has turned on and water is being poured into the water tank. As water level rises, we can see the float bowl and the bush. It goes up along with the water level, along the string. And as it reaches the stopper nut, which we have fixed on the maximum limit, the float bowl lifts the dead weight and turns off the pump. So that was the installation video of OnoFloat water level controller. Hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching.